the topic on uh, business management IP diploma on depreciation of assets which is part of financial accounts. In this topic we're going to uh, see what depreciation of assets means which is the uh, it refers to the fact that many assets that we own lose value over time. For example they may lose time to their use which causes wear and tear or simply because they become obsolete objects. This can apply to both intangible and tangible assets. For example, smartphones are generally designed with a life of 4 to 5 years for their software and 5 to 10 years for their hardware. Engineers have codes that establish an approximate design life of their constructions, as you can see from this summary. For instance, there's a uh, well, there's, there's buildings that are meant to last for a long time and buildings that are meant to last for a, uh, a smaller amount of time, and this is by design. For example, the impressive Milo Viaduct in France was engineered with a design life of 120 years. This means that halfway through its life, the viaduct should not be valued at its original cost of 394 million euros for by then it should have lost some of its value given that it has reached its midlife design. This value that the bridge will have lost every year of its life is what depreciation means. There are two ways to calculate how much value an asset has lost, the straight line depreciation method and the declining balance depreciation method. These are not different ways of calculating the depreciation of the assets, but different ways of understanding their value. For example, suppose that UPS buys a delivery truck for $35,000, that it expects the truck to last for three years, and that at the end of it, those three years, it will sell the truck to a metal recycling company for around 2,000 years. Those $2,000 those $2,000 is what we call the residual value. The straight line depreciation method assumes that the value of the asset will fall along its design life proportionally to the number of years, that is, the asset will lose the same value every year. Therefore, the annual depreciation is calculated by dividing the cost of the asset at the moment we are disposing of it by the number of years we aim to keep it in our books. The cost of the asset is calculated by subtracting the residual value, in our example, the money we get from selling the truck to the recycling company, from the original cost of the truck. In the case of our example, by applying the formula, we get that we should depreciate our truck by $11,000 per year. We can see in this table that the value of the asset is at the end of every year, um, where the value of the asset is at ev the end of every year, as we buy the truck for $35,000 and it loses $11,000 of value a year until we sell it for $2,000. The declining balance depreciation method works differently. Rather than depreciating the asset by the same amount every year, we understand that there are some assets that lose more value at the beginning of their life than at their end. A common case for these are vehicles. Therefore, instead of calculating a fixed yearly depreciation amount, we calculate a fixed percentage depreciation amount. For the same percentage, we'll remove more value at the beginning than at the end of the life of the asset. The formula to calculate the percentage is as follows, where n stands for the number of years that we intend to keep the asset for. In our example, the cube root of our residual value of 2000 divided by the initial cost of $35,000 times 100 will equal to 61.48%. With this percentage value, we can then calculate the depreciation for the year by multiplying it times the net asset value at the time. We can see in this table a summary of the calculations. Notice how the annual depreciation falls over the years, as we depreciate the asset more at the start than at the end, and, therefore, the net asset value of the asset also falls more at the start of its life than at the end. 
Eventually, we will dispose the, of the asset for the same residual value, in our case $2,000. All we have done compared to the straight line method is change how much the asset is worth in between the moment we bought it and the moment we disposed of it. From these examples, we can observe that the main advantage of the straight line method is its simplicity, but the reducing balance method is more realistic and accurate. However, for the same token, the simplicity of the straight line method makes it unrealistic, especially for assets that we know lose a lot of value at the start of their life. One big issue of the reducing balance method is that it does not work for assets that have a residual value of zero. Therefore, as a conclusion, the straight line method is more suitable for small items whose residual value is zero and for which we do not care much on how they lose their value over time, whereas the reducing balance method is more realistic for big assets. This is it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please remember to like and subscribe.